Howdy all you delicious people. I'm here to talk about Power Rangers SPD. So, I'm going to play the role today of the person that steals all your stuff and walks off into the forest and never to be seen again until an hour and a half later you find out I'll, I'm dead and you're going to take another 30 minutes because this movie's two hours just to mourn my death. <laughs> So, let's talk about Power Rangers SPD. So, we ultimately have a interesting role of Emperor Groom, which ultimately is played by Rene Nafahu. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, because I may have messed that up. Uh... Ultimately, Renee ultimately has also played in Power Rangers Samurai as G, which I'm like, oh, wow, hey, this is great that this guy, like, they, they used him again. Uh, I know that there are some characters eventually that do uh, cycle out or eventually go into being villains or, or this and that or, or be... Uh, any number of roles that you'll kind of go, hey, wasn't, like, why does this guy look so familiar? Oh, it's this guy from this season that I remember. So, let's at first talk about this show in a very cryptic-like sense, and then we'll break down, like, some kind of things about some of the episodes. Twelve episodes, we'll kind of, we'll kind of maybe do a, uh, kind of early buildup of some of these things and some of these episodes. So, we ultimately have Jack and Elizabeth, who is mostly called Z through most of this. I wonder why. <laughs> Was it that, like, this person, like, wanted a nickname? Were they, like... Was Elizabeth too long? Was it a, was it a thing for... Uh, Brandon, who plays Jack, to give her that nickname? Was it, like, I don't know, I'm interested. So, we ultimately have Jack and Z, who seem to be these people that's, that are very much Robin hood esh that steal from the rich to give to the poor. And I thought that that was kind of really interesting about how these people become eventually being Power Rangers. Reasonably, a really good thing about this show is we did not have clearly, like, telling everybody what color of Ranger anyone is going to end up. Like, everything was just like, yeah, we're not going to tell you that Bridge is, is so-and-so color. We're not going to tell you that Sky is going to be this color. We're not going to tell you that uh, Sydney is going to be this color and so on and so forth. Everything was kind of left to guessing work, and that's what I actually like about this season. Um, because every other season would just be like, yeah, you know who's going to be the, the Red Ranger? Probably the person wearing red. <laughs> who's going to be the Yellow Ranger? Gee, golly, I don't know. <laughs> Is it the girl with the yellow eyes? Maybe it's going to be her. So, Power Rangers SPD. So, the thing that I actually like about this show is it kind of breaks the... Uh, it kind of breaks the monotony of... Like, having these people just be these uh, characters that are, like, uh, teenagers with attitudes and they're in school or they're in some kind of detention or they're going to a froyo or they're going to uh, a... Uh, they're going to mostly be in school because <laughs> most of them are so young um, from most of the seasons. Or some like dojo somewhere. Or, like, yeah, it kind of breaks the monotony of 
all these other things at some point through all of these seasons. We ultimately have this season called Space Quad or Space Patrol Delta. So we also have a a much higher rung of team that is going to be doing uh, some heavy lifting at some point until that team eventually has to bow out and go on some space adventure and to where we are left and kept with uh, Space Quad Delta. So what are the... What other teams were there before we, like, landed this one um, at some point? So, going into this, we have... Uh, we have some, at some point, some very overly confident characters. Some characters that just want to help out seemingly no matter what the odds are. And we also have characters that are just happy to be here, which... I guess could be a really good uh, kind of mixture of team, uh, especially going into a seemingly much more uh, formidable like approach to Power Rangers because with the exception of maybe like uh, Power Rangers Samurai where like training is the big thing or Lightspeed Rescue where also like training is a big thing like reasonably like we have a kind of a wide spectrum of of some people really heavily training and then also some other people just kind of like going like yeah i don't know much about this this whole space patrol thing but i'm gonna try my best um going in here i liked the fact that jake or jack jack uh ultimately the red ranger didn't even realize he was the Red Ranger. Like, that... Uh, I'll talk about that when we get into, like, spoilers. But I thought that that was actually funny. I thought that... Sky... Ultimately... Assuming he was going to get the Red Ranger position... Was interesting... Because very rarely do you have anybody, like, jockeying for a position of any color. Everyone's fine the way they are. Or you may get Adam that talks about, oh, why am I a frog? <laughs> and Dulcia has to mention to him, it's like, it's not a frog, it's a toad. It's a toad. Because we'll, you'll get a kiss like a handsome prince. And then and, and Adam's like, hmm then he's fine. So, in this season, we have 12 episodes to review for you. So, let's get into those, because at the end of the day, uh, I just want to say, like, the extra added, like, aliens being placed into this world were so fun to me. Um, we had, like, not only did we have to, like, create, like, monsters to just be placed in every episode as the main villain, but then we also had monsters that had to just be placed everywhere, because this seems to be, uh, some future-ish, like, point where we now have monsters just plopping around in this environment which i'm like okay well i'm kind of confused how is it that we have monsters kind of plopping all over the place but then any other season they didn't do that i guess maybe because they spent they did a little over budget with all the the monsters they randomly created for every episode uh so maybe they pulled back a little i don't know uh so, the villains in this, in these episodes, I'm going to kind of mention them off. Uh, Emperor Groom, we have Morgana, which she has this, like, doll that keeps, like, getting to people. We have Bloodwing, and, and ultimately, I think those are the, the main ones. 
And then we'll just have, like, plopping, plopping, like, characters per episodes. So... I and and of course we also have on the the hero side, we have this piggly character or uh, piggy character that he seems to be an informant, which I thought was interesting, or like a person that's like, hey, what do you know about all this stuff? Which kind of reminds me of the show Angel, where you'd have eventually uh, Angel uh, David Bornaz uh, going to this demon to sing to him to get information or to to see his fortune or see the future or get some future knowledge so going into this let's kind of knock down these spoilers talk about every single episode hopefully <laughs> whichever can just pop in there at some points in time so Let's go into spoilers about this. Let's go into the double ten count. So, we are now in spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about the time we get into spoil Power Rangers SPT. So, in the very beginning of this, we have Sky that is a very confident man, which is completely okay. Because ultimately, like, he has, like, trained his entire life for this moment. Because Sky, his father, was a Red Ranger. So he's like, well, clearly I'm going to be Red Ranger. I've trained all my life for this. And, like, I think I deserve it. I think I'm going to be better than anyone doing this job. Because ultimately, when Kruger, like kind of uh has him aside he's like well what if uh what if bridge was the leader what if sydney was the leader like what sky what would you say about that basically he just meant he just kind of like kind of shuts it down it's like not neither one of those are leaders come on really <laughs> Like, neither one of them. Come on, you're joking, right? So, we have Kruger, who eventually goes and gives them all morphers, tells them all to morph. And so, reasonably, we have, in the very beginning of this, we have this, like, training session in the very beginning of the first episode. And I was like, oh, wow, cool, I love like, where they have them actually training in these, like, simulations and stuff like that. There was plenty of times where there was, like, simulation-like things where ultimately, like, Jack would have to, like, uh, would have to, like, shoot these three targets. And, like, I like the training aspect that they kind of dip in here because it kind of just shows that they're, like, consistently doing something other than morphing and, and beating down somebody. Because you can't have those school-like moments. So, in here, we eventually have, we have Sky, Bridge, and Sydney, who have not yet gotten their suits, but eventually will. So, they eventually uh, kind of blast their way at first through um, some monster and defeat them. And eventually we find out that eventually they will get morphers. Evidently the morphers will uh, will showcase when they kind of hold it up whether somebody is innocent or guilty so they can judge them. Funny enough, I saw one episode where someone was where the whole group was morphing and I saw a morpher piece like fly off to the side and it's like where they're all like grouped up together and they're all gonna morph at the same time and you just see the close-up of jack as he morphs because there's a flying of morpher piece that comes out i thought that that was hilarious maybe somebody dropped theirs and 
I just saw Morpher piece flying in in the scene, which I was like, oh man, that's that's kind of interesting because I'm sure, like, you know how many times probably somebody dropped their morphers or their morphers probably broke or something else happened during the the shooting of the show. It's okay to eventually see an interesting edit or just kind of overall just them just going, well, like, we tried to fix this in post, but this is what we, <laughs> like, maybe someone won't catch it, which I did. And <laughs> maybe someone won't notice stunt doubles in the first episode, which I did. Like, Z plenty of times would consistently, like, multiple man herself or everywhere man herself where ultimately she would have several copies of herself just kind of just flowing everywhere like that was kind of really interesting and to see how they approach those like having all those stunt doubles but then like having to like do those kinds of scenes and like i thought it was funny when jack and z eventually had to clean the spd windows headquarters how like z was just like well like how many windows do we have to do like like 1200 of them so they had like z was just like well i think i'm gonna be done with this pretty quickly because she can just multiply herself so in the very beginning of this, we have Jack and Z who are stealing stuff, and ultimately they eventually get caught by Sky, Bridge, and Sydney. And so, reasonably, both Jack and Z eventually, of course, have like mutant powers like sky bridge and and sydney do as well uh sydney has this like like she can touch something and she's like nick nolte from the movie hulk where she can like touch something and then like have the material like uh fill her hand so she can have like a rock like fist and smack somebody and bridge has this uh, like he can sense energy and then Sky can make this kind of like shield thing, which I thought was interesting, like circular shield. Jack, I think, can like phase through things, I think is what he can do. And then, of course, Z can multiply. So. And eventually, I think there's a, a character that ha that comes up later called Sam. He also has powers as well. So. Going into this, we have Jack Z stealing stuff, but giving it to the poor, because ultimately their goal is if you can't wear it or you can't eat it, then it's pointless, because someone was getting giving them a, a proton accelerator, which I'm like, isn't that the name that you use for everything when it's a machine? How many times has something been called a proton accelerator through any number of things? I've probably heard that probably somewhere in Ghostbusters. If you probably watch it back, uh, you'll probably hear the words proton accelerator probably somewhere in there. So we have in this first episode this odd like football metal like thing that Jack receives and then the guy just randomly runs away and we don't know why. And so eventually it gets to the point to where Sky and Sky, Bridge and Sydney are eventually meeting Jack and Z and then eventually they get uh they get a swarm of minions that appear and so reasonably they end up being way outnumbered and Jack and Z are basically just like well I'm 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 peacing out I'll see you later <laughs> peace
I'm out of here. Don't even, don't, like, don't even try to make your way to me because minions in, in your wake. So, Jack and Sky, or Jack and Z bolt, and so, eventually the Power Rangers are outnumbered, but they morph anyways, so they can kind of, uh, kind of, as much as possible, take out a number of these minions, but... Still, Z and Jack come back because Jack's like, you know what, I, I think they are kind of outnumbered. Why why do all that running? <laughs> Just be like, you know what, I'm second-guessing all this. I'm second-guessing my horrible decision. Um, so I'm going to run all the way back to go and save them. And sure, far enough, they come back, save them. And then, ultimately, they end up in prison anyways. And so, like, they're regretting this decision. And Kruger comes in and he's like, you know what? How about you guys become, like, Power Rangers? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> you wouldn't have to live the rest of your lives in prison. You would just be able to be Power Rangers. And... Z ultimately easily just like, you know what, this is a great, this is great. Because ultimately Z was telling Jack how, like, she wants something more for them. She wants to do something bigger. And really Jack was kind of throwing that in, in her face. Not really understanding, like, why do any of this? So Z eventually... Uh, says sure i'll be a power ranger why not sounds pretty cool and eventually so we have sky bridge sydney becoming blue green and pink and then z ultimately becomes yellow and so eventually we have to where the power rangers go out they're they're fighting they're ultimately fighting their crime again z is not wearing a yellow uh suit to tell us that she's going to be the yellow ranger which i thought was again cool uh eventually when the guys demorph you have them change you had them change into every single individual color that they were and i was like oh wow that's cool because, again, it, like, shows that it's, like, okay, well, like, we're taking the time to eventually now show you that you are going to be this color. Okay, great. So, we eventually have it to where Jack is realizing, again, that these people are outnumbered. And so, recently, Jack says, well, I think I need to go out there. I think I need to help them. And so, Jack eventually does morph turns red of course funny enough through these episodes we have so many times where the power rangers are posing or they have to mention every single number they are at some point i think it kind of gets repetitive the later on that these episodes go um but i think it's funny at some point like one of the villains were like hey stop posing or, or like yeah we get it like <laughs> you're these you're these power rangers we get it <laughs> you don't have to tell us so we have we have it to where eventually there is an episode where jack doesn't even know he's the leader He's a Red Ranger, but he doesn't know if he's the leader. So we have Jack, who who is uh, kind of on this, like, uh, like he's going to pounce. Uh, all the Rangers are going to pounce on the villains. And so reasonably, like, Sky is asking for the word. Hey, when are we going to when are we going to go, squad leader? Like, who, who, when is this going to happen? Like, come on. Like, let's do it. Let's do it now. Jack is just, like, he's, like, far away and just kind of like, yeah, when is this squad leader gonna, <laughs> gonna give us the call? Because he doesn't even know. So, 
Because Jack is completely unaware of all this, because everybody else, like, knows the rules and regulations, especially Z is a quick study. So, they end up, like, fumbling over, like, getting the grab of the villain, and then ultimately, like, Jack mentions, like, well, I wish I would have, like, I wish the Z, I wish the leader would have told us to to jump on all this, because he was doing a crappy job. And Sky was like, yeah, he was doing a crappy job because that's you. <laughs> it's like, oh, and then eventually uh, Jack takes advantage of being the leader and basically is is reading a comic book and, and, and fluffing off while like he's having the rest of his other team run five miles and... Then eventually we have him lose his position as Red Ranger, and now he has to learn a valuable lesson about not taking his position and and taking advantage of it. To ultimately he loses his position, and then he has to apologize and says, "Yeah, like, you know what? I did a crappy thing, and now like I see that all my friends are out there." morphed and they are trying their best and like i'm just here just just standing here with kruger and like i want to be out there i want to be their leader and i want to i want to help them out kind of like it was really like i like some of these episodes so we eventually have an episode where we have this kid called sam that eventually is a kid with powers that ultimately like doesn't seem to quite fit in basically he's an outcast because he has powers because he goofs around with his powers ultimately kids are playing basketball he takes the the basketball and just kind of makes it appear and disappear we ultimately have morgana who is also a young girl that seems to be uh, her power is dolls, where she makes dolls out of people. And I thought that, that was really interesting, because I'm like, okay, well, like, normally you, like, for villains, like, you'd have, like, people turning into, like, being sucked in a bottle, or being, like, miniatures, or uh, smaller variations of themselves, or whatever, or, or you'd have, like times when like people would turn into statues and all kinds of stuff all weird approaches so going into this we have to where morgana is coming to sam as a doll and trying to talk him into doing everything because she's going to be his best friend to where sam ultimately comes to her and works with her because like the power rangers are trying to get sam away from this monster but sam ultimately is just so tied to morgana and because she is a young girl that accepted him for who he was and ultimately she is his age so Sam eventually goes to be with Morgana and basically Morgana is manipulating Sam to just say, well, hey, how about you turn all the Power Rangers into dolls because I want an SPD doll. Sam eventually is like, mm, you know what? I'm not sure about all this. Ugh, this is kind of turning out not what I thought it would be. So ultimately, Z ultimately is the culprit of a Power Ranger that is going to be turned into a doll. But luckily enough, she uh, she doubled herself. So they just got the double. They didn't actually get her, luckily enough. So we also... And then eventually that episode re resolves with uh, with Sam eventually going into the SPD Academy and uh, ultimately because Zords and, and, and killing of, of the monsters and stuff ultimately leads to Kid being like widely accepted 
by the ST, SPD uh, Academy and eventually be having a bike also. Where did the kid get a bike? I, I, don't, I don't know how they worked that into the story, but okay, sure. He got a bike. Uh, I get, what is that? His, what was, was that his like grand prize for, for being on the show? It's like, Hey kid, you get a, you get a SPD jumpsuit and you get a bike. Thumbs up, buddy. <laughs> so there's also an episode where Bridge eventually has to do this investigating investigation Whereas where this woman is being like tied to all these like bank robberies and he has to try to figure out if it's her or not. Because ultimately we have another monster who uh, was pointed out by this by this monsterish woman that Bridge doesn't know is a monster until the end of this episode and she basically mentioned like, yeah, like it's this monster. And so reasonably when they're having the SPD like innocent or guilty, it comes up innocent because the guy never did anything. Like he's a bounty hunter to find this woman. And like that was the whole interesting case. Eventually we have it to our bridge eventually mentions to this woman he's like you know what i knew it was you all along i knew it and so he grabs a he grabs a car and throws it at her and she slices it in half and she's a monster and it's like oh, okay cool we'll kill the right person so we also have piggy uh coming in every once in a while they're um he was the guy to tell him uh, to tell him there was a proton accelerator. They're bribing him to get information. Eventually, there's an entire episode where Sydney uh, had a birthday. We always have to do like birthdays on Power Rangers. I guess that's always the thing. We had like Zach and his birthday. Like there's always a birthday episode mixed in somewhere through every season at some point. Funny enough, we have Jack when Sydney is going on and on about her birthday and how, like, ultimately Jack is forcing her to work on her birthday. Oh, my birthday. My birthday. It's going to be ruined. I have so many plans going on with my birthday. And Jack ultimately mentions, like, well, I don't even know what my birthday is. And she's like, ah, well, I've been going on and on about my birthday. And... <laughs> The real reason why you're so just like, mmm, about me is just because you don't even know when your birthday is. So, interestingly enough, I liked that about, like, talking that about Jack, even though it could be a, just a goofy episode. I thought that was fun. Like, I liked how Sydney and Jack were, like, doing a stakeout the entire time uh, for some woman. And eventually Jack, like, saves this woman. And eventually the the girl talks about, like, oh, but, like, birthdays, like, that's the greatest thing of all. Because <laughs> it really shows everybody, like, how much they like you and how much you're a great person when you have a birthday and this and that. I'm like, okay, that's, that's a little weird. Um... Yeah, so there is also an episode where we have we have Sky eventually having a friend come back from uh, from being out for a very long time. Eventually, there is this, like, bracelet smacking that they consistently have to do, where you have to, like, zoom in the word SBDs on, on both of these bracelets. Uh, we have this character that ultimately has, like, dots on his eyebrows. And, like, at first, this guy seems so innocent and reasonably he is 
he is really like showcasing this like yeah i'm actually like really great at all this all this spd stuff and you show sky's best friend that ultimately uh mentions that sky was like wacky and wild and stuff like that kind of showcasing that sky wasn't always like this he was just battle hardened or something so, because everybody else is like, well, I wouldn't describe Sky as <laughs> wacky or wild. So, Sky's best friend eventually goes into eventually being this guy that seems too good to be true. It seems like he can, uh, Matt, he can, like, kind of even be better than Jack at doing this. Uh, this blaster, this blaster exam or this blaster simulation, um, because Jack shoots all three of these targets with three with three blasts, and then Sky's best friend comes in is like, well, how about I do this? How about I try this? It's been a while. I'm a little rusty, but how about I try this? So. We ultimately have Sky's best friend try this, and he like he takes a while, but then blasts every single one with one bullet. These three targets with one bullet, with one uh, blast. Ultimately, mentioning that like, well, hey, yeah, I'm a little rusty. It took me a while. It's like, dude, you 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 only had one shot, and you took it, and you you made all of them. Because ultimately, uh, Jack was, like, mentioning, it's like, well, like, hey, let me, like, put some more blasts in the in the chamber of this gun. Because there's only one left. It's like, well, the guy mentioned, like, well, I only need one. But, so reasonably, Sky's best friend is more and more, like, starting to show cases that he's becoming a little disgruntled or a little bit unhinged. And... Uh, people start mentioning this to Sky, and like Sky kind of pushes away. He's like, "Dude, this is my best friend. It's like I know him. Like, like no, there, like there was so much that Sky didn't see because he didn't want to see it." Troll ultimately, Sky's best friend eventually turns into a monster. And then Sky himself has to take him down, which I thought was really I'm like, man, this is really awesome. Like to basically like have to turn on your best friend because Sky's best friend turns on him, and then Sky is like, well, I'm gonna have to take him down because basically Jack like uh quarantine sky's best friend and says like like this guy's unhinged like there's something about this guy and it's bugging me so this guy needs to get examined or this guy needs to be this guy needs to like be checked uh because sky's best friend mentions that he had amnesia so eventually pushing him to be a monster we find out Best friend, monster, Sky, takes him down, book him down, I'll destroy monster. So, we also have in here that there is a time when Picky eventually gets to have seemingly a business brewing it's weird to see this transition of this uh this person that is going for information that eventually gets some kind of food joint and now we are seeing every single time the the power rangers come in that all the monsters just like run away wild and they're like Wah! the power rangers are coming and so every single time the power rangers come piggy's like Dude, you just made me lose 40, 40 customs. What's going on? So, eventually we have, at some point, the Emperor 
uh, showcasing who he actually is in this show and eventually going and being a real person. I'm like, okay, why go through all this? Like, is he like, there's, there seems to be at several times that like villains can't exactly fit in these planes for very long. And I guess that could be a thing in the show where you have it to where the main villain can actually be in the same place as the Power Rangers at the same time as the villain. Um, or maybe it's just easier to just have a person not always in a suit so much because they would probably dehydrate or die uh, because of how just hot those things are with the exception of maybe the power rangers where the power rangers would be in suits for i don't know how long but anyways so but i think those those monster suits are a little bit thicker they're a little like you have so much like uh silicone or leather or whatever the heck Tons and tons of layers. So I think that's why justifiably in some seasons they just had like just some people not like be the main villain but not have them in like be a monster because good grief that would like <laughs> you're you're like I want to I want to know some some interesting stories about the monsters that were put in because I love people and I love Stories about peoples and people, people in suits, um, because of how probably uncomfortable it was to wear the suit, long it was, and how they were just like, God, I'm just, I'm miserable in the suit, I'm dying, I'm uh, just, it's like, uh. so, hopefully no one got really sick after being in these suits for X amount of time, um, or whatever so going into here we have we have episodes that go into the 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 Emperor Groom, who is a normal person and is going to try to get Bloodwing uh, to give him information. And so Emperor Groom has to go all the way to the surface world, dress as somebody else, just get information from Bloodwing. And Bloodwing is like, well, hey, how about you just call me like you do normally? How about we just text? How about we just, <laughs> how about you just ring me up like you normally do? Why go all this way? But eventually that becomes a time where it's like, well, yeah, well, like, he wanted to be on the surface world for once. Like, he wanted to, like, see how it was. And I think eventually he just wanted to not be in that suit for one episode. <laughs> and so, yeah, that is the approach. Because look how deep, if you go to Emperor Groom, like, God, this guy is so much, like, stuff. Just everywhere, helmet and everything. So, and to the point where, like, how many villains do you see where you can, like, barely see their eyes, justifiably? So, going in here, eventually we have to talk about Kruger and his story. Because we've already talked about Sam and his story arc, now we're talking about... Kruger in his story arc to mention that he is the like seemingly the first ever SPD like character. Uh, eventually we have we had uh, the A team of Space Patrol. Eventually earlier on they would do some Zord stuff or they would do stuff that the Power Rangers wouldn't do. But then eventually they went off to, to a space adventure to where 
the Power Rangers Delta had to to deal with everything. And so they like eventually got into the Zords and did their thing. Did all of of Team A. And so recently Kruger is seemingly having these memories about being on this other planet where he is being so outnumbered by all these minions and he's just like flopping around and 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 just like ah i'm outnumbered i'm outnumbered everybody i'm going to die because i'm outnumbered by all these minions that i don't remember the minions names in this season i just don't i'm just gonna keep calling them minions so and probably there's somebody that's going to be like, oh, yeah, the minions of this season was so-and-so, because they probably know all the minions, because there are some stuff that kind of dips away from me in some of these episodes. So, yeah, Kruger is like, whoa, I'm die- I'm going to die, because I'm getting outnumbered. My home planet, like, everyone is going to die, and this sucks. Because, and so reasonably, Kruger has the anniversary of his planet's death on his conscience. And so now he's being like a real stooge to all of his other rangers. He's like treating them like crap. He's just like, you know what? I don't like you. Get out of my sight. I don't like you. Go and go and beat off some villains. Go and beat some villains today. I don't want to see your face. (laughs) And then, like, people are going to be like, what's wrong, Kruger? And he's like, don't even look at me. <laughs> what? Don't even look at me during this episode. <laughs> I am anger. I am the rage right now. Don't look at me. Don't do the looking. So, Kruger eventually is just so angry at everybody He's like, grapple, grapple. He's like the real, like, like, uh, get off my lawn, Clint Eastwood, going on right now in some points of this, this episode, for the most points of this episode. So, Cat, who eventually is a cat in ears and ears and hair and, and all that stuff, Cat eventually is going to tell Kruger, it's like, you know what, I think you need to go and fight off, like, Hose guy. Or hose head. Because ultimately we have this hose like Bane looking monster that's uh, ultimately uh, had slayed all of Kruger's planet. And he's coming back to take out Kruger because he's the last he's the last of his planet. And so Kruger is like, you know what? You're not, you're not going to take me down. You're, you're not, you're not going to do this. It's not going to happen. Peace out. I'm, 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 I'm just, <laughs> I'm not going to fight your fight. I'm not going to do this because it'll like, I don't want to die because I'm the last of my race. So. Cat eventually is trying to warm up Kruger to to do this. She's basically handing him a morpher and he's like, this is insubordination. I'm not going to take this from you. So Cat eventually goes off on her own and gets beaten up by two hooded men in reverse angles and all these weird acrobatic flipping like things, maneuvers of such. But eventually she gets taken Liam Neeson style. Well, any way that you would take somebody would be good enough for me, I guess. So we have this cat-like woman eventually getting taken and eventually being, like, put into some semi somewhere and hooked up to all these gadgets and just held somewhere until Kruger comes along. Because we find out that Kruger had a wife on this planet and she she died and so that's probably what hurt hurt kruger the most so we have to where kruger has to go out because cats held hostage 
Kruger goes out there, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to deck all of you people. <laughs> there seems to be 100 minions in this episode, and interestingly enough, they had to, like, they had a counter off to the side, which was like, yeah, I like that. That's great. Um, you're basically telling us, like, yeah, he's going to deck everybody. He's going to take down everyone. He's going to just slice and dice it through everyone and a hundred of them which is awesome and you're going to give us a countdown so because Kruger eventually has his sword that he fought with before but he is going to morph because reasonably he should he is he is number 100 and that's kind of cool because like yeah he's like the he's like the boss of everybody um so why wouldn't he be like a high ranking number and so reasonably kruger eventually goes in either wire or not wire and just starts like slicing and dicing through all these minions and we're getting a counter i'm like yeah <laughs> count them down buddy <laughs> He's like, there's like 30, 29, he's, he's wiring up, flinging around everywhere. At some point, it looked like there was like him supposedly like sliding on some dirt somewhere, but actually the, the wire was goofily uh, swinging him and it looks weird. Uh, you could tell he was swinging on a wire through a portion of this fight. And so eventually... Kruger kills all these 100 men by, uh, I think, like, just kind of flinging his blade just seemingly everywhere. Just, like, yeah! <laughs> like, he pokes one in the eye. Ah, oh, I'm dead! <laughs> he doesn't even do, like, he doesn't actually really, like, really brutally kill all these things. He just, like, slices them in half, like, all of them half. But eventually, at some point, one gets probably poked in the eye... One person loses a, a foot, maybe. It's it's a kid's show, so it's not going to be that brutal, but I'm making jokes. So, Kruger eventually goes into slaying all these 100 minions to fight the big old Bane-ish-looking monster that ultimately he has a backstory of, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to kill you. Kruger's like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you down. Like, I'm going to... I'm going to make it so, like, you are for killing my wife and my planet, and I'm going to get you. So, reasonably, like, Kruger just slices down this monster and then, like, keeps it, keeps the card for keepsake. Because what ends up happening is, instead of actually, like, slicing these monsters in half and they're gone forever, no... What ends up happening is every single time a monster gets sliced in half, they turn into these SPD cars and then they go into prison seemingly forever. And sometimes you have it to where the SPD morpher eventually also like does it to where you can uh, obtain uh, seemingly monsters because they showcase that in the very beginning. Where you have a uh, boomer who was the kind of like kind of fledgling uh, guy that is going to be the tech person that ultimately like makes mistakes or slips on a banana peel at some point, and, or ultimately lights himself on fire in the early episodes, which ultimately makes Jack realize, you know what, I should actually be a, a Red Ranger because one of these guys in, in one of these rooms are going to light on fire and I, and I should probably morph out of my way and just... <laughs> but funny enough, Boomer was like lighting himself on fire and he fell asleep and lit himself on fire to the point of like, okay, like evidently didn't feel it at all. Uh, here's also the thing we have... We had this little robot that becomes a part of the show at some points where they have to either CGI him in or kind of shift him to where, like, there's interesting camera angles or just, like, robot 
like actually have him do little tricks or whatever. Or probably mostly just shift him into camera angles. There was one entire episode where Sydney had talked about, yeah, what a garbage, what a, what a garbage thing this dog is. Like, boo, I don't like him. Yeah, he sucks. And so the dog eventually is getting these improvements and eventually he has to try to track uh, some goop down because it seemed like there was one monster in one episode that was turning everyone into slime because, again, slime, Nickelodeon, green goop, slime or Ghostbusters, but still Nickelodeon. So, because <laughs> I don't remember where... Is, was this the Nickelodeon season? Was it not the Nickelodeon season? Because I know at some point there was like some Disney or Nickelodeon like season somewhere. And I think now their Power Rangers is with Hasbro. Mood point. So if anything, we have a pile of goop that is like contained in containers. I don't know why every every random person has to be like either like Turned into a, a tub of goo, or turned into some doll, or turned into some something. Which, I, I don't get why they have to always do that, but I guess it's it's interesting. Instead of having a Power Ranger turning into a tub of goo, you just have some random pedestrian, or civilian, that has to be saved at the end of this episode. Like, guys, try to kill this monster as quickly as possible, or... Or the, the people will be tubs of goop forever, or will be dolls forever... Or it's it's really going to suck for them. Boo-hoo. You'll never see them again after this episode anyways. But, uh, you know, it's a nice gesture. <laughs> so, ultimately we have uh, Sydney eventually falling into this. Like, she's digging forever. And then eventually she just, like, really just falls into this like cave entrance like thing this like tunnel and eventually finds this tub tubs a goop and then she's like oh my god dog you were right this whole time high five dog <laughs> and then so they had to like purposely write like the usefulness of this dog because like, I guess they, like, they realized, like, hey, how about we have, like, a robot dog, like, they tried to do in, like, VR Troopers, where VR Troopers had to, had a, like, a Wilbur talking dog, or where he's eating the whole time, and, uh, every time he would talk, he would just, like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm having a good time, Wilbur, yeah, mm, mm. <laughs> like, this is great, no, mm, mm. <laughs> you, you could, you, that that was funny to me, but I'm like, yeah, you know what? They're they were taking a risk. They were trying something. I guess the robot dog was again them trying something because again, I guess some of this stuff was like prototypes for them to eventually try to perfect in VR troop or VR troop, uh, beast morphers. What was I thinking? So going into this i think that's all i wanted to really just kind of go into and talk all about and i really like i had some there were some fun episodes out of here there were some interesting things that we learned about some of these characters and so reasonably i am going to get out of here goodbye everybody bye everybody